The question, is insomnia a curse or a blessing? Numerous epidemiological studies have discovered that about 30% of the world's population, including more than 50% of people older than 60 and almost 20% of those younger declare sleep disorders. One third of these cases can be qualified as chronic. Insomnia, Ohio, 1997. Salenberger and Skalski 1999. Insomnia is connected with the complaint of falling asleep difficulty, staying asleep difficulty, poor quality sleep and is associated with distress and impaired functioning. There are many causes of insomnia including medical diseases, psychiatric disorders, behavioral factors, circadian dysrhythmias, primary and sleep disorders. Daytime complaints about insomnia are fatigue, sluggishness, sleepiness, somatic complaints, aches and pains, stress about poor sleep, mood disturbances, poor concentration, impaired performance. Insomnia is generally divided into primary and secondary insomnia. Primary insomnia appears for no apparent reason. Secondary is related to another diseases. Another popular criteria are how long insomnia persists. Transient insomnia lasts for a few days to a week. Acute insomnia, up to one month, and chronic insomnia, more than one month, MIM, 1984. Transient insomnia lasts for a few days to a week. Acute insomnia, up to one month, and chronic insomnia, more than one month. Transient and acute insomnias are usually related to some kind of trigger, stress, noise, pain. Chronic insomnia can be related to another sickness but more often, it is caused by so called perpetuating factors which cause insomnia to remain even when the primary causation of it is gone. Predisposing factors, being prone to insomnia, biological grounds like personality, maintaining circadian rhythm, age, genetics, precipitating, triggers, factors causing sleep interruptions directly, environmental, adaptive, medical, perpetuating factors, drugs abuse, improper sleep hygiene, exaggerated expectations of sleep, the fear of insomnia, often create a vicious circle of insomnia. There are numerous methods of non-pharmacological treatment of insomnia. They include, information on the sleep hygiene principles, stimulus control, sleep restriction, relaxation techniques, feedback, cognitive therapy, chronotherapy, phytotherapy, Morin, 1999, Yang, 2005, Shooter Rodon, 2008. The sleep hygiene principles include, refraining from naps during the day, getting to sleep and getting up at the same time, restraining or giving up consumption of caffeine, alcohol and nicotine, avoiding physical activities shortly before moving to bed, staying away of any emotional arousal before bedtime, ensuring quiet environment and comfortable temperature in a bedroom, removing clocks from a bedroom, Howry and Fisher, 1986. A sleep restriction means for the patient being in bed no longer than usually sleeps at night, according to his subjective assessment, for example, by sleep diary. As the sleep's length is usually underestimated, the patient will partially deprive his sleep, reducing at the same time the number of awakenings the following night, Spielman et al. 1987. Stimulus control technique aims to restrict the bedroom and the bed for a sleep only. Reading, eating and watching television in bed is prohibited. The patient should go to bed only when feeling sleepy. If a sleep does not come within the next 10 minutes, he has to get up, go to another room and return only when feeling sleepy. An alarm clock should be set always at the same time, regardless of a sleep's length. The patient also has to refrain from naps during the day, boots and et al. 1991. Insomnia is dangerous for our health. It is a serious sleep disorder. That's why I think of it as a curse. Especially that insomnia concerns a huge amount of people. It is a civilization disease. 